now we will be discussing the art aneurysms and dissections aneurysms and dissections first of all we will define what is aneurysm aneurysm is abnormal localized irreversible dilatation of any part of cardiovascular system what is aneurysm this is abnormal localized irreversible dilatation of any part of cardiovascular system for example aneurysms can be present on arterial sides or aneurysm may be present in the left ventricle if someone develops let's suppose here is your cardiovascular system now aneurysm let's suppose this is your left ventricle if this part of the left ventricle undergoes myocardial infarction this part of the myocardium undergoes infarction and then it is it heals by formation of a fibrous patch then that fibrous patch which is formed here right it heals by fibrosis uh, that is not having the strength of the myocardium so uh, due to repeated systolase pressure will increase on fibrous patch and gradually this fibrous patch will bulge out right and when this fibrous patch will bulge out it will produce what is this now called left ventricular aneurysms this will be called left ventricular aneurysm what i really want to put in your mind is aneurysm is not only in arteries aneurysm may be formed in anywhere in cardiovascular system including the ventricles whenever uh, you can say there is significant weakness in the wall of the tube is that right so this is an example of left ventricular aneurysm in the same way aneurysm may form within an aorta that a part of an aorta part of a wall of aorta bulges out abnormally right this is again localized abnormal dilatation of a part of a cardiovascular system which is irreversible and we'll call it aneurysm then once we have defined the aneurysm uh, we should have a very clear concept that some of the aneurysms are called true aneurysms and there are also false or pseudo aneurysms false aneurysm so let's see what is the difference between the true aneurysm and false aneurysm true aneurysm is when the all the walls of the aneurysm are made by the layers of cardiovascular system let me explain how the, what is the difference in true aneurysm true aneurysm and false aneurysm let's suppose this is a blood vessel right of course you know blood vessel has multi layers intima media and adventitia is that right now let's suppose that this part of the vessel is pathologically dilated this part of the wall of the vessel has become weak and due to pressure uh, this part of the wall pathologically stretches out and balloons out right and of course in the normal human right along with that uh, this is the blood which is present in the aneurysmal sac but the point which you have to remember is that the blood which is present in this aneurysm uh, this is still within the cardiovascular system right and wall of the aneurysm is made by the walls of the three layers of the artery intima media and adventitia even though these three layers or any one of these layer may be very very weak and attenuated but still the blood which is present in aneurysm is part of the cardiovascular system opposed to that in pseudo aneurysm what really happened that blood leaks out of a part let's suppose some blood leaks out from here and it forms 
extra vascular hematoma. This is making extra vascular hematoma and maybe there is some muscle or some other structure which keep the blood, this some other tissue or structure. Now, you see this is not a true aneurysm because all the walls of this blood collection is not made by the cardiovascular layers. Is that right? This type of aneurysm is called pseudo aneurysm or false aneurysm. What is false aneurysm? False aneurysm is when uh, through blood vessel some blood leaks out and some perivascular tissue seals the spread of the blood further. Is that right? And blood is trapped over here and we say that there is it looks like aneurysm but it is not a true aneurysm because on one side of this uh, collection of blood there is arterial wall, on the other side there is some other tissue making, right? Another classical example like this is uh, seen in left ventricular you know uh, around the left ventricle what is there? Peri? Cardium. Now sometimes what happen that suppose there was myocardial infarction here and you know after few days of myocardial infarction two to three days lot of neutrophils and macrophage in, infiltrate the infarcted area and start digesting away and this infarcted area become soft sometimes this infarction area ruptures and blood from the if this ruptures blood from the ventricular cavity may leak into outside but now this blood is not uh, truly in vascular system and this blood is not truly in pericardial sac because some pericardial sac adhenes right trap the blood into this area. This is an example of true aneurysm or pseudo aneurysm. This is pseudo aneurysm right. So you must be very clear what is aneurysm. Aneurysm is abnormal localized irreversible dilatation in the cardiovascular system which may be in ventricular cavity or it may be in arterial side or even venous side. True aneurysms where blood in the aneurysm is surrounded by all sides by the layers of the wall those aneurysms are made by the layers of the cardiovascular tissue right and in false aneurysm some wall of the aneurysmal blood is made by you can say tissue which is not vascular tissue or we can say the, the blood on true aneurysm is still within cardiovascular system and blood in false pseudo aneurysm is not within the cardiovascular system, right? Another thing which I want to explain here is the concept of dissections. What are dissections? Let me explain that what is dissection. Let's suppose that this is your left ventricle and here is your aorta. And here is uh, which valve here? Yes, please. Aortic valve, right? Now this is the heart basically. Sometimes it happen. First of all, you understand normal. Normally, blood tracks in the lumen, isn't it? Normally, blood is tracking in the lumen, which which happens physiologically. Sometimes. If there is media of a blood vessel is weak, for example in this aorta, media due to some reason is weak, then there may be intimal tear and some of the jet of blood may enter through the intimal tear into the wall of the vessel. For example, here a jet of blood has entered from the lumen while producing an intimal tear within the media. And within the media, this jet of the blood may start moving proximally or may start moving distally and this blood now may be present within the wall of artery not within the lumen of the artery and while it was moving you know distally or it was moving proximally this jet of blood produced dissection within the wall right 
dissection. This was the wall of aorta. This is the healthy wall of aorta. And what we really see that this jet of blood has produced an advancing hematoma within the wall and this is uh, you can say splitting the layers of the wall and it is moving within and dissecting the layers of the arterial wall and this type of uh, in old times wrongly it was called dissecting aneurysm but now they call it simply dissecting hematoma. We will talk about some general complications of aneurysms. General complications of aneurysms. Let's suppose that here is an aneurysm. Now, what could be the complication? First complication can be the blood which is present in the sac of aneurysm is not through normal blood flow. The blood which is present right within, trapped within the uh, dilatation, that is not the part of the normal blood flow. So you can say blood may be stagnant there for a while. And you know when blood becomes stagnant, it becomes a hypercoagulable situation, right? So there's a big chance that there's formation of development of what is this thrombus. So formation of thrombus. So this is one complication that aneurysm may have development of thrombus. Thrombus, thrombogenesis, right? Secondly, that from the this thrombus sometimes what really happens that a piece of thrombus may dislodge from there and if a piece of thrombus from here dislodges right and come into circulation this piece of thrombus is now mobile right it is now mobile and may go to some distal point at a narrow point and obstruct the blood flow there so this phenomenon is called embolism embolism so one complication is thrombus formation one complication is thrombus formation and other complication is embolism embolism is when a piece of thrombus may break down, break away or the whole thrombus may break away or part of a thrombus may break away from the point where it is formed and go to general circulation and downstream it may close some, occlude some smaller vessels. So we say that thrombus formation and embolism is. Then another thing is that sometimes microbe reach here. This is a very happy microbe. Why this microbe is so happy? Because it has seen it's a decent place to live, right? So if some microbe from circulation or from neighboring area, right, it may come into this uh, aneurysm, especially when there's thrombus formation also. So due to the presence of the thrombus, this microbe may be well protected from the antibodies or from the neutrophil and macrophages or other defenses which were supposed to eliminate this microbe, right? So bacteria may come over here, settle into thrombus related with the what is this aneurysm or bacteria may settle with the abnormal wall of aneurysm and then these bacteria may proliferate here and if these bacteria are proliferating here then naturally they very rapidly further damage the wall of the aneurysm and increase the risk of rupture of aneurysm so this type of situation is called infection that and the third complication is that infection may develop within the aneurysmal dilatation, the thrombus present in the aneurysmal dilatation or infection may settle in the wall of aneurysmal dilatation.
right? Then another complication is that if M, this aneurysm, as it stretches outward from its normal anatomical confines of the blood vessel, as it is protruding outward, it may produce, you can say, pressure on neighboring structures. So it may lead to compression of neighboring structure. This neighboring structure is very unhappy. Why? Because aneurysm is putting pressure on that, right? So one more complication is compression on or impingement on neighboring structure. For example, aortic aneurysm may compress the esophagus and produce dysphagia or aortic aneurysm, you know, arch of aorta, aneurysm of arch of aorta may press the recurrent laryngeal nerve, left recurrent laryngeal nerve, and that may produce brassy cuff, right? Or aneurysm may impinge on and produce erosions in the ribs or vertebra, and that produces bony pain, right? Or abdominal aortic aneurysm may compress on ureter, and that may produce uh, complications, right? So general complications are, you can write it's a five, it's a star-like complication that you are going to have thrombus formation or you may develop embolism or you may develop infection or you may develop compression and impingement on the surrounding neighboring structures. And in the end, the most important complication of aneurysm is rupture of aneurysm that is the rupture of aneurysm and sometimes when large aneurysm rupture like aortic aneurysm or small aneurysm like berry aneurysm in subarachnoid space when they rupture they produce catastrophic side effects so one more complication is rupture of aneurysm right rupture of aneurysm so these are the five complications that an aneurysm may produce thrombi and these thrombi may embolize or aneurysm may produce compression of surrounding structure or aneurysm may act as a site of infection or eventually aneurysm may rupture and produce some catastrophic complications. Like if aortic aneurysm rupture, patient may go into shock and mortality is very high. Or if uh, berry aneurysm of right, aneurysm of cranial vessels, especially the ring of, there are two carotid arteries and there are two interior cerebral vessels, middle, what is that, ring of, ring of, ring of villas. So if that is, uh, you know, aneurysm is present over there and that ruptures, that may produce subarachnoid hemorrhage, and that may be very, very dangerous, right.